again, this is Al Spath bringing you True Poker with Bobby BC Two Dot right here at the table. Hi, Bobby. How are you? Great, Al. You learned your lesson, right? Yeah, I got Queen Five of Spades. I only have two dollars in the pot. All right. Spend another two dollars and see what happens. I have no problem with that. More likely than not, the blinds are just going to call or they're just going to fold. So I, we got second pair. So three guys in the pot. They both checked. Yeah, they guys both checked. I think I'm going to bet three quarters of the pot here. Remember, when you got two or one, you're betting full pot. One folds. You understand? Full pot. Yeah. You don't okay. want to give them chance to stay in there Nate. there you go yeah. it's an automatic doesn't matter how you're gonna lose sometimes but you're gonna win more times out of not when you do a full pot with two or less people when they both check and you get the option of, of betting to pick it up I got seven eight offsuit just gonna fold yeah, that's the same hand we talked about before we came on the air with nine ten offsuit, and you said, "I I I, I want." It. What was the words you said? Um, I'm tempted to play. What did you say? I'm tempted to play. I'm tempted to play. Those are the words. When you say I'm tempted to play, or this is a marginal hand, or this is a hand that gets me in trouble, listen to your gut and throw it away. It's just not worth it. Absolutely, you could win with those, any two cards, but the chances are slimmer when you know they're not good to begin with. So this is a one-two table, and I've been looking out in the lobby um, for the last hour, and I noticed it was like 18 to 20, so it was like a, a 10 to one, the big blind being $2. I always divide the, the big bet into the average pot to get kind of like an average of what, what's going on. So it's about 10 times the big blind, and then it went up to $39, which is about 20 times the big blind. And so, you have to keep track every now and then of how aggressive the table is as players come in and out. You know, you coming in is going to probably raise it a little bit because you're a more aggressive player. You've got one Russian. I'm going around the table. You've got two Russians. You've got three Russians. you got a Ukrainian. Uh, United States, United States. you got you got six, five to six Russians at this table. Four, yeah, four or five. That's yeah. not that's not a good scenario because the chances are, I'm not saying or advocating that collusion happens, but collusion happens more at one, two, two, four, three, six online, and when you get four, five, five players from the same country at the same table, you got to get a little suspicious about it. They might say the same thing about five people fleeing from the United States. But it's more likely there are more United States players just playing, and it just happens that way. Um, so you got to keep an eye out for suspicious betting and things like that. Like, what would be some telltale signs of collusion? Oh, um, one guy may raise, another guy may. Um, either call or raise and then drop out later on uh, in other words build a pot or um, just 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 fold it away to, at the turn or something like that and not show the cards and uh, just get out of the way they you know when people are colluding a lot of times what they say is hey we we'll all start with two hundred dollars so let's say there's five of them so we'll all start with a thousand dollars I mean total at the table and then when they finish the night, some might be up, some might be down, but they may be at, let's say, $1,700 if you total everybody up. So they take the 700 and they divide it between the five people as to what, they're, what they all get. So um, that's how they, they do it. Mm -hmm. I talked to one guy that used to, uh, he said he colluded um, with his wife. And I said, how did you do that? He said, well... She would go because the IP addresses are tracked and everything. And usually, 
two people from the same IP address can't play at a cash table. They can play in a tournament because it's random seating, but at the cash table. So she said she would just go to her um, daughter's house and she would play from there, but he would Skype with her and he would tell her, you know, what he had and she would tell him. So he would know cards that are dead and he would, you know, get out of the way of her hands and stuff. You know, it was just a modest uh, collusion, but it still was collusion, you know. It's still an advantage way over anybody else. What do you have? I have a six, seven of diamonds. Okay. So you should be thinking about what you're going to do based on what anybody else at this table. Look at this guy with 436. We know he's been winning. <clears throat> I'm going to call. Okay. What are your options? A raise, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, flop second pair. Okay. Say to yourself, what are your options here? Full pot. Right. Okay. Another thing that a lot of people like to do with second pair, out of the blind, because you're out of position, is check, let knowing that even I teach continuation bets when you have one or two opponents. You know the person more likely continuation bet even if you miss. So you get their money in the pot and then you go three times their bet. So in other words, you had the option there to check raise to try to get his money in. You chose to go and bet the pot and just chase him away. I have no problem with that. But keep in mind the other option also and mix it up. Okay. Of check raising the person. Especially when it's a board like was out then there was no no all right i've got two trip. other callers uh, now the big blind hasn't bet yet i got a jack eight i'm just gonna fold that's a good fold that's a good fold a nine doesn't help you here because likelihood of a king could be out yeah. there so it's a good fold there. If that was suited, it wouldn't be a good fold. I would, I would have, I would have fired something in the pot there. But uh, being that it was unsuited and everything else, it's just a good fold. There's the nine. To, you don't want to be the bottom end or the ass end of any straight. There's Mega Dan again sitting to your left. The guy I told you that was probably a bot. Um, I think over the top is another one that you might find at a lot of tables. If I, I'm trying to remember back, and La La Rue is up there. He's at a lot of tables. He was at your last table. Yeah. Four ten of diamonds. Doesn't do me any good. No. But the thing to note is when you're not in the hand, what are other people doing? A guy under the gun just limped. He, yeah. he either has a big hand, he's hoping somebody raises, or he's got a hand that he wants to see a flop with and play multi-way. Kind of like a 4-6 suited. Kind of like a pocket pair of threes. Kind of like an ace suited, like ace six. Those are the kind of people that do that. Now, with this guy raising $11, you're out, right? Yeah. Watch with the watch with the big blind and watch with the guy that limped. He called. See now he called. Yeah. He limp called out of position there. That's strange. Why would he do that? He had a strong hand. No, I don't think so. I think that he just was set mine. I think he had something uh, or just a suited ace and he didn't get the right colors and he just thought, you know, against that three twenty. $325, he tried to spike something. He paid a, a big price being out of position to do that. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong, but, you know, he didn't stick around, so he obviously didn't have nothing. You said you were playing 2-4 and 3-6 this week online, and 
you were doing fairly okay. Now, did you, did you play any one two at all this week? No, I didn't play any one two. Okay. From your times that you have ventured into the one two, have you noticed the difference now that you know you've left the fifty cent one and gotten up to? Yeah, they, they, these are better players. These are stronger players. They are stronger players, but you will notice as you go up online, as when you play live, you'll get players that revert back to play that they did at the lower limits. In other words, right here you might find the most concentration of good players, and you'll find less good players, although you think you would find more 2, 4, and 3, 6. I think as you go up, you're going to find less. You're going to find people with deeper pockets that are there to, to play for bigger pots that don't really have the skills, which is a good thing for players like yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't want, you know, if you're the ninth best player in the world, you don't want the other eight players that are better in the world at your same table. It's great for your ego if you can beat them, but it's not great for your pocketbook because you're not likely to beat them. Yeah. And you said you played four, three or four sessions over at the Hard Rock each day, just bleeding away three or four hundred dollars. No, yeah. no yeah. big yeah. losses, no big wins or anything like that. I, and just cards. I, I, I had one big bad beat. Had kings against aces, uh -huh. all in. Another time, I had aces. The other guy had queens. So you know, I thought he went out. Yeah, you see, Ping Tennis just sat down at the table. He's. He's notoriously a bot here, and he's got, I'm sure he's got 10, 20 tables open up. I remember him from a long time ago. And bots play a certain way, because remember, the bots are programmed, if they're in late position first in, they're going to raise with any two cards. If they get re-raised, or three bet, or four bet, unless they have a really huge hand, they don't stick around, they don't do the calls and stuff like that. You have to program bots to play a certain way. You can't say they're going to play a certain way at each table. They play the same way at every table, and that's just the way the bot system works when somebody buys a program like that. Um, I was talking to um, Ryan the other day, and he was telling me that um, a bot program, he talked to a person that had a bot program um, but you had to set up the parameters and everything. And so if you don't set up the right parameters, you may have a bot, but they may be a losing bot. In other words, <laughs> yeah. you, you got to make sure that they're doing the right things at the right time. So is that, it could be costly to a person just getting into something like that, and I don't recommend it. I'd rather play against them. And there's a, a min raise under the gun by a bot. Re raised by another bot. <laughs> We're playing against bots here. You got you got at least three for sure, maybe four at this table, in my opinion. Well, we know they're not colluding because they don't use bots. Don't talk. <laughs> what do you? What did you fold? Eight ten. Okay, good. Good. Let's see. Mega Dan was the first min raiser. Let's see what he does. Since he was re raised, you know, you would think he call. He would just check here and see what this guy does. This guy should bet 22, and he checks it right back. If he had three queens, he might do that. There's a $20 bet that should have been on, on the flop. There's the call. Let's see if he's going to go 45 here or not. He could have queen king suited in the... Uh, like clubs or hearts, I mean, yeah. If he checks, then he tried to buy it, and there's the 45. See, I'm always trying to figure out 
what I think there, and he went over the top. See, the Lawler could have a king, pocket kings, and his Megadan could have the queen only. You know, he called him. Threes. He hit. He gave him a free card yeah. on the on the on the flop, and he <coughs> turned a, a set on him. That's sick. That's sick. If Mega Dan really had a hand there, he should kick himself in the ass for not betting into him on the flop. Yeah. That's the worst thing in the. So he re Now we go back and we look at that. He re raised with pocket threes in early position. That's that's kind of a programmed event there. That's you know if you got a pair you're gonna re raise. If you're gonna play you're not gonna call. Some people, a lot of people would just call with those pocket threes. I got Jack five suited, but this guy raised big. I'm folding. Correct though. If, if I if I were the first to enter the pot, I would have gone into the pot. Right. That's see. That's one one leak eliminated. <laughs> Queen nine offsuit. Got a min raise. You know, it's funny in tournaments as the stakes go up. Um, normally early in the tournament people are raising three and four times the big blind but as the tournament goes up they go back to like a min raise because they can effectively do the same thing because the, the price is, is a lot higher in a cash game it's not the same because the blinds are not going up so a min raise is usually a signal for somebody that's that just building a pot got a kind of weekend or it could be trapping so this guy with the four uh, dollars here got the raise from over the top he calls him now and finds himself paying twelve dollars to be out of position. If he didn't put the four dollars in, um, put a bigger bet in, he could either throw it away by now. In other words, if he'd have made it eight dollars and the guy came over the top and he really didn't have a good hand, he could throw it away, but and saved himself four dollars from calling the twelve dollar bet. This is a small bet by over the top, nine dollars. Yeah, more like big cards, not big pairs. You wouldn't think that Panda has a four here or a pocket fours. Now this guy bets the thirty-three and takes it down. <clears throat> You've been traveling this week, or are you staying home? I, I'm traveling tomorrow. I'm going to Chicago tomorrow morning. Is that where you go most of the time in Chicago? Yes, yes. So I'm going to Chicago for the week, and uh, then uh, October 7th, I'm going to Colorado for four weeks. I'm getting my right knee replaced, knee surgery. Oh, my goodness. So uh, in Vail, Colorado, there's a great clinic and a doctor out there. Uh -huh. Patricia's going to go with me. Oh, and, good. Uh, so I'll be there, and I'll, I'll be laying in bed or getting my rehab and calling you. <laughs> You'll have a laptop, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I have Ace 3 offsuit. I'm folding here. The Trisha uh, ski? Yes, she does. Well, she does. Uh, if you're going in, in October, they'll, the first snow will be then. She'll she'll get out and at least. Uh, no, no, I, I don't think there's any snow in October. No, it's it, easy. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, this is supposed to be a really brutal winter too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we were there last winter. The heaviest snowfall they've ever seen. I mean, this was like you know, two or three feet of snow out there. It was uh, very pretty, very nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. King, king, four, three yeah. suits. He bets $5 into a $16 pot. $12 
$25 pot and see what he bets this time. Do, 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 do. A little over half. Three, five. No, no good there, huh? Are you getting both knees or one knee? Uh, one knee, just the right knee. They don't recommend getting both knees done at the same time. It's a, it's my wife had a hip done, one hip, and they told her that a knee is a lot harder rehab than it is for a hip. Yes, yes. Are you a football fan? Ah, uh, not so much, but Trish is. Trish is a big football fan. Oh, good for her. Yeah. My upsets. Yeah. My upsets. I, tell her my upset special today is the Chiefs over the Ravens. Okay, I'll tell her that. <laughs> See, I'm getting these hands all four days in a row, like now at eight, two, seven, three. You know, it's like. Uh, frustrating well it is and it isn't you know you have to you have to turn your mental uh, emotional being into a positive frame of mind I just heard the way you said it and everything and it, and it just was a negative connotation it was just so frustrating to you it's just eating you up what you have to say is hey look I'm going to get my share of bad hands. I'm getting them all right now. Maybe I'll get some good hands. When I do get a good hand, I'm going to maximize. And when I'm getting a bad hand like this, I'm going to throw it away. I'm going to watch the action. I'm going to try to range people. I'm going to try to learn for some. And so, in other words, you've got to stay in the game no matter how bad the hands are coming. It's You'll tough. Have to it's be. tough. But that's what they call grinding. You, you grind when you don't have the rest of hands. You, you, you grit and bear it. You just... Do everything you can to to make to find the little gold nuggets when you can, and then it's going to be days that you just feel like you're getting great cards, and even the great cards are getting beat up. It's just there's no rhyme or reason for it. Sometimes you just have to make the least amount of mistakes at the table. That's the the ultimate goal every time you play. Don't make mistakes. And capitalize on the mistakes of others. Uh, I think he see this guy here should bet a good twelve bucks here, maybe even thirteen, fourteen, almost a pot because. He's got two clubs out there. There's a good chance this, this guy could have an ace rag up there, and you don't want to give him a good price to try to get his rag card. Or, I mean, you want you want to make charge him extra if he happens to have two clubs too. Check is not not recommended. Now this guy half the pot don't like it he calls the why would he just call there hmm. let's see $32 let's see if this guy goes $22 $24 here $15. 
55. Is that a little bit of an overbet? <laughs> I know he's trying to scare, uh, scare him away or get paid off. <clears throat> well, you know, he, he could have flopped the set and he was just uh, hoping that guy thought he was overbetting, overreaching there and hopefully he got a call. But uh, uh, I got a queen three. Min raise, another guy calls. So there's eight and three, eleven dollars in the pot already. Okay, but the key, the key yeah. to what you saw just then before this guy raised, is the fact that you were going to close the betting. In other words, that is very important, and you could close the bet if nobody else came in for a raise. Let's say they all yeah. came in for calls. You, no matter what two cards you have, you yeah, will yeah. call that hand if you're closing the betting because you don't have to worry about anybody else doing. You might just get lucky with queen five. You may get a queen five flop or two fives. You know, you don't know. You know. Seventeen, less than half. One, one third of the pot. Yeah, that one got the call. He'll check it. Here's the third diamond. Now, a lot of times these guys <clears throat> can bet this. This this could be the bluff or semi bluff. He could have something like a seven, have a seven, but he bet it like he has a diamond. So he may get a call, but he still may have a backup second pair. You know. Yeah. Dan takes it down. That hand took a long time. Yeah, eight ten, all day. Well, we don't know that. Now we yeah. do. <laughs> now we do for sure. So let's range this guy uh, Crosby in early position with a three times the big blind bet. He could have a small to mid pair. Ace ten, ace nine. Okay, let's let's do, yeah. let's do this different. He's in early position at a nine play of the table. He's more likely to have big cards, big pairs, than have the smaller ones because there's so many people yet to act. So think a little bit reversed there. He needs he should have big hand to do that from early position at a nine player. Nine player is hard to get around without some re raises. So you you tend to have good hands in early position. <coughs> Nothing? Three, five. Okay. Interesting bet. Solid bet. A little low 2.25. The thing is, when you go 450, you allow somebody like over the top to go 13. You know, in other words, three times the big blind is 12, 13 dollars. There, you can you can get re-raised and, and keep it kind of small. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you raise six, seven bucks, somebody's gonna have to go 18, 20 dollars to re-raise you. Or offsuit.
eight jack off suit. <laughs> well, this has been a learning, definitely a very learning session. It has not been exciting, but it has been a very learning session. You reminded me of a few things, and those are very valid points. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, no, you just, it just happens that sometimes the hands don't come that you can play and you just have to just grit and bear it. Um, we, we got to, and you, those of you that are watching this video, we did about oh, 35, 40 minutes prior to coming on, on the video yeah. here of 50 Cent One and we got to see a lot more hands, talk about some, some hands. And I try to reiterate some of the, the, the hands when we came on the air and everything but sometimes you just don't get that we were talking about that you just don't get that seat that offers you the opportunity to mix it up the way you want to mix it up and there's sometimes you just don't want to mix it up because it just seems that you're second best all the time and and that's frustrating as hell um i just played online the other day and i sat down at the table and i got kings the first hand I got jacks the second hand, I got ace king the third hand, I got queens the next hand. And each one of those hands I got exactly no play from anybody. And the next hand I, I got that I played, I had uh, ace king suited and then I lost like... And guess what? I got king six of clubs and I'm folding right here. <laughs> and then I got an ace king and then I lost it. So sometimes you, it's what you can make of it but it also depends on what the other people have and the texture of the flies. There's so many different factors in here. So don't, just like Bobby was saying, it's frustrating to get bad cards. It's, it's really frustrating to get good cards and lose all your money too. That's, that's even worse. At least when you're getting bad cards, you're throwing away, you're not losing, you're not bleeding any money. You know for a fact you shouldn't be in there. Good. What's up? Yeah, a good friend of mine, Donna Blevins, has a book out about mindset, and, and she teaches the mindset of a person. And she's Donna Blevins is, is a big girl poker, for those of you who don't know. She's like, I think, 6'5 or 6'6. Six, six. She's very tall, and she's one of the few women in pros that has been to um, final tables at WSOP and, and things like that. And she's a good friend of mine down in, in Florida, and she works with... Uh, wounded warrior veterans she goes to the hospital and she teaches poker with them and she she gets them thinking about cards and what's going to happen and, and she gets their minds distracted and she gets their parts of their brain functioning again that haven't been functioning and she stirs up uh, the mental thoughts and she does this out of her kindness of her heart to work with those people and and she should be commended for it. But her new book out is a bestseller, by the way, on Amazon. And uh, she did, I, I helped, uh, along with a lot of other people, edit and go through her book. And it, it turned out really nice. Well, what's the name of the book? I'll get it. Um, I'll give it to you after this. It's uh, the proper name just just escapes me, but I'll, yeah. I'll put it in an email to you. Uh, no problem. And then for those of you listening, I'll put the name of the book on the uh, YouTube uh, video in the in the comments section. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Well, thank you for today's session. Okay, my man. Uh, it's been great. Uh, I I hope you have a great Sunday, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. If if not, be, and I'll send you an email to tonight, and then I'll give you a recap uh, by tomorrow morning on the session, and along with the video. And uh, good luck with the surgery. If I don't talk, I'm sure I talked to you before of then. Course. But, uh, we, we, we will we'll do a couple of lessons before. And I'll, I'll send me instructions for the PayPal. All you, right? got it. you got it, buddy. You take care now. Thank, thank you so much. All yeah. right. Bye now.